In the summer of 2022, a New York woman was arrested in the Springfield Gardens neighborhood of Queens in connection to the murder of 23-year-old Kayla Hodgson. The latter's body was found on July the 13th at a Broward County apartment complex in South Florida. She'd been fatally stabbed multiple times and the primary suspect was subsequently identified as Sakina Thompson, aged 28. Although the circumstances surrounding the killing remained unclear, the motive was a reported love dispute as Thompson and Hodgson were believed to have been dating the same man. After Broward County officials released a warrant for the former's arrest, she was taken into custody by the NYPD on August the 3rd and the extradition process was set into motion. Number 6. Asha Maslin on Valentine's Day 2014, Englishwoman Holly Gazard, aged 20, broke up with her boyfriend, Asha Maslin. She gave him the news in a restaurant and had deliberately chosen the public place as she knew he was prone to violent outbursts. Maslin was controlling and possessive, demanding to know where Gazard was at all times and turning up on the nights that she was out with her friends to follow her around. Gazard's mother recalled one incident in which the former security guard had treated the young woman like a piece of dirt in front of friends and family at a birthday party. Unbeknownst to Gazard, Maslin had been arrested 23 times in the past for a variety of offenses that included violence against at least two of his former partners, his own mother and several other unconnected people. The police was made aware of an incident that occurred in July of 2013, in which CCTV had captured Maslin grabbing Gazard by the throat. In another outburst in August, he pushed her to the ground in anger after they'd become separated at the Notting Hill Carnival in London, when Gazard had taken his young nephew to a restroom. In spite of the man's aggressive behavior, they eventually resumed their relationship until the Valentine's Day breakup. In the aftermath, Maslin stole Gazard's bank card and withdrew £300 from her account. He then bombarded her with abusive texts, threatening to harm her and her family. The young woman notified law enforcement on February the 15th, but they were unable to find Maslin, who had reportedly gone on a drugs and alcohol bender in London. His movements in the days that followed would be retrospectively determined through CCTV. He was captured buying a 12-inch knife from a Wilkinson store, with the money he'd made from trading in his DVD player. Then on the evening of February the 18th, surveillance cameras recorded him walking towards La Bella Beauty Salon in Gloucester, where Gazard worked as a hairdresser. Minutes earlier, he'd texted her sister's partner and written, I warned you all. Gazard had spoken to her boss about discreetly calling the police in the eventuality of the scorned lover harassing her at the workplace. There wasn't, unfortunately, enough time to do so in the space of less than two minutes. Maslin stabbed Gazard over a dozen times inflicting devastating injuries. She was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital and he was arrested on murder charges. Maslin was reported to have stood remorseless before a judge in July of 2014 when he was handed down 25 years to life. Number 5. Keith Connerton On February the 18th of 2017, after an argument, Irishman Keith Connerton left the home he shared with his longtime girlfriend, Claire McGrath, in the Tala suburb of Dublin. The couple, who had a son, reportedly had a volatile relationship, marred by disputes which were influenced by their respective drug use. They typically end with Connaughton leaving their home. At the time of their latest argument, McGrath had secretly been seeing 32-year-old Graham McKeever. In the days leading up to the row, she'd sent him messages expressing her love and that she wanted to be with him. She asked McKeever to come over while Connaughton was out of the home and was in bed with him at around 4 a.m. when her boyfriend returned. McGrath would later tell the authorities, I don't know why I thought he wouldn't come back. He always does, and described her failure to realize that aspect as a bad lapse in judgment. She met Connaughton in the kitchen and told him that their relationship was over. The situation escalated dramatically when the man realized that there was someone in the bedroom. He grabbed a knife and threatened to kill McGrath, at which point she screamed in fear and McKeever came out of the room half naked. A fight broke out during the course of which Connaughton stabbed McKeever several times with one of the serrated blade strikes piercing his heart and killing him. In her original statement to the authorities, McGrath's description of the altercation depicted Connaughton as the main aggressor. However, by the time she was in front of a jury, she and Connaughton had made up and resumed their relationship with her regularly visiting him in jail. McGrath denied that her boyfriend had pushed or threatened her and maintained that he was holding the knife because he was cutting cannabis. She added that he'd had ample opportunities to use the blade 
but had only chosen to do so after McKeever had charged into him like a bull and started punching him in the face. Connaughton had indeed suffered a fractured orbital bone among other injuries. McGrath eventually agreed with the prosecution that her memory of the killing was unreliable due to her use of cannabis as well as prescribed Xanax and sleeping pills. Her original version of events prevailed and Connaughton was found guilty of murder for which he was given a mandatory life sentence. Number 4. Seneda Soto In November of 2022, Texas woman Seneda Soto FaceTimed her boyfriend and became enraged when another woman picked up the phone. 23-year-old Soto broke into his Bexar County home and started a fire after stealing several items. Deputies later recovered a video that showed her in the act of setting the unnamed man's couch ablaze. I hope your house is okay, she allegedly texted her boyfriend afterwards. She'd also FaceTimed him showing a chair on fire in the home. The blaze spread to the rest of the house, causing damage estimated at over $50,000. Shortly before 2 a.m. on November the 20th, the Bexar County Sheriff's Office, Little Fire Department, and Bexar County Fire Marshal's Office responded to the arson call. Soto was subsequently arrested. It eventually emerged that she'd been unjustly angry at her boyfriend since the woman who'd picked up her FaceTime call had been one of his relatives and not another lover. Number 3. Lindsay Stevens A Mississippi woman was arrested in early 2021 for attacking her husband and delivering several non-fatal knife strikes. In the aftermath, Detective Abraham McKenzie of the Jones County Sheriff's Department spoke to the press and offered some insights into the suspect's peculiar motive. 33-year-old Lindsay Stevens had reportedly dreamt that her husband had cheated on her. Upon waking up, the incongruously scorned woman went to the kitchen, retrieved a knife, and repeatedly stabbed her husband in the back. The police was called to their Mosell home, and Stevens was taken into custody on a charge of aggravated domestic assault. She was held at the Jones County Adult Detention Center on a $10,000 bond. The authorities didn't immediately disclose if mental illness or illegal substances had played a factor in the stabbing. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and maybe it will be your video that we'll be doing next. Number 2. Lakveer Singh For 16 years leading up to the fall of 2008, UK woman Lakveer Singh, a married mother of three, had been having an affair with Lakvinda Chima, who'd once been a tenant in her home in Southall, London. 39-year-old Chima eventually ended the affair as he decided to settle down and have children. In November of 2008, he got engaged to 22-year-old Gurjit Chung, whom he'd only known for a couple of months. Plans were made for them to get married on Valentine's Day of the following year, in spite of tearful pleas from Singh for her lover to not go through with it. Then in December, Chima spent a week in the hospital. Singh stood by his bedside every day, and Chunga thus realized that they'd been involved. The younger woman warned Singh off, told her to forget Chima and to no longer interfere in their lives. Doctors couldn't determine the source of Chima's illness. Even though it was suspected he'd been poisoned by Singh, it later emerged that within weeks of the engagement becoming final, Singh had traveled to India to acquire the poisonous plant Aconitum ferox, commonly known as Indian Aconite. While she was eventually acquitted of poisoning for that incident, Singh would prove devastatingly effective in her revenge plot on January the 27th of 2009. On that day, while Chima and his fiancée were at work, Singh went to their West London home and laced a leftover curry in the fridge with aconite. That evening, Chima and Chunga had the dish while discussing wedding plans. After dinner, Chima, who'd had a second serving of curry, became violently ill. In addition to vomiting, he started losing his vision and the feeling in his body. Chunga reported the same symptoms. Aconite victims become paralyzed and their organs gradually stop working before they succumb to asphyxiation but remain conscious throughout the agonizing process. Chima called an ambulance and told the operator, someone put poison in our food. She is my ex-girlfriend. Family took them to West Middlesex Hospital where Chima died within an hour. Chunga, who was on the verge of death herself, was placed into a coma for two days. While doctors traced the poison and gave her an antidote, she made a full recovery and Singh was arrested. The case became 
internationally known for the level of premeditation displayed by Singh, who was dubbed the Curry Killer, and for the fact that she became the first person to be prosecuted for murder by the use of aconite since 1882. Singh tried to place the blame on her brother-in-law, but a lodger had spotted her handling the curry and a brown powder, later proven to be Indian aconite, was found in a plastic bag in her coat. On February the 10th of 2010, she was convicted of murder and causing grievous bodily harm. She received a life sentence with a mandatory 23 years. Number 1. Kiara Mack After her boyfriend had left her for another woman in early 2020, Australian woman Kiara Mack launched a sustained campaign of harassment against the unnamed man. Over the course of three months, the 23-year-old sent him threatening messages and promised to ruin his life. She posted revealing photos of him on Instagram and was reported to have physically assaulted him. The man became so fearful of the scorned lover that he moved house. Mack, who at the time worked as an accountant, then obsessively drove the streets and in April located her ex's black Volkswagen. She spray-painted the word cheater on it in pink and with a heart topping the writing. Mac then sent him a Facebook message that read, I know where you live. I know where you work. I know your footy club. I know your favorite bars. I know the code to your house. In a follow-up threatening message, Mac insinuated that she'd be going after his sister's car. When she was eventually arrested and her phone was seized, the police found she'd previously conducted online searches about how to find people's home addresses and real estate listings for residents on the victim's street. Mac chose to represent herself during her appearance at Melbourne Magistrates Court in the summer of 2021. She described the messages as just us arguing and maintained that the scratches her ex had reported came from his footy matches and not her attacks. Mac also claimed that she suffered from mental health issues due to the breakup, the pandemic and her own isolation. During a subsequent video appearance in June, she pleaded guilty to six charges, including stalking and assault. Mac broke down and begged the court to spare her a conviction, even turning off her camera at one point, which prompted a magistrate to tell her to stop acting like a child. She was eventually given a 15-month community corrections order in order to pay a $1,000 fine, in addition to undergoing psychiatric treatment. Thanks for watching. Would you rather receive detailed performance reviews from all of your exes? or have a movie made about your worst date? Let us know in the comments section below.